So in this video, we're gonna continue looking at solving quadratic equations. Again, quadratic equations are equations when we have an x squared. And that's our highest term, highest exponent that we have. So we're gonna start by reviewing, solving using factoring with the difference of two squares method. Difference two squares. And then we're gonna work on solving using GCF, factoring with the GCF method. As we kind of left off with that uh, yesterday, because that brings up some more complicated situations when we have to inspect. So let's start with the review, solving a couple equations using the difference of two squares method. Let's just go ahead and set up a couple equations here. So these are quadratic equations. We have an x squared and we want to solve it. So eventually the idea is we'll be able to look at the equation without being told what method we're going to use. But as we're just getting started, we'll say this, we're going to solve using the difference of two squares by factor. So if you remember with difference of two squares, we're always going to try to plug our expression into this a difference of two perfect squares, something squared minus something squared difference of two squares. So when we have x squared, that's always just gonna be an x. x squared is the same thing as x squared, that um, makes sense. 25, when we have a number, we're gonna try to break it down. 25 is five squared, five times five. Never drop away your equal sign. And then from here, if you remember, it's the first one plus the second one. So x plus five. And then first one minus the second one. So now we've factored it. That's a big part of it. But we want to go ahead and solve for x. And if you remember when we're solving for x with quadratics in this case, we want to use what's called inspection. <clears throat> inspection. And that's where we ask what value of x is going to make this parentheses equal 0 what value of x is gonna make this one equal zero. So let's start over here. What value of x will make this one equal zero? That's gonna be x equals five. If you replace x with a five, then you'll have five minus five, which is zero. How about over here? What's our value of x gonna be here? This one is gonna be negative five. You plug in negative five, negative five plus five gives you zero. So x equals negative five, x equals positive five. And again, this is just review from yesterday. This one over here, we're gonna solve using difference of two squares method as well. We know it's gonna be something squared minus something squared. And we know this is gonna be x. And what's gonna go in this other spot? That's gonna be an eight, because eight times eight is 64. And so from here, it's going to factor into x plus 8 times x minus 8. So it's plus and then minus. And we're going to take the same approach here. What's going to make this parentheses equal 0? What's going to make this one equal 0? Here, this would be x equals positive 8. Here, this would equal x equals negative 8. X equals positive eight, x equals negative eight. So let's go ahead and try practice. Let's try this one, x squared minus 81 equals zero. So let's pause the video, let's try this one out. All right, so x squared minus 81 equals zero. We're gonna solve this using difference of two squares method. So it's something squared minus something squared equals zero. And by the way, you don't need to do this step every single time. This is just as we're practicing. So 
So this is going to be x minus 9, because 9 times 9 is 81. And so we're going to get x plus 9 times x minus 9 equals 0. And then from here, x, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> x would equal positive 9, x would equal negative 9. So I think one of the points where we might get caught is knowing how we're getting from 81 to 9 or whatever, uh, 64 to 8 and so on. So these are perfect squares. Uh, you can always just guess and check, say, okay, I know it's going to be something times itself. Okay, 7 times 7, what is that? It's going to be 49. Uh, 8 times 8, that'd be 64. 9 times 9. That's 81, there we go, so we know it's gonna be a nine. So knowing your perfect squares is helpful for this. So let's just go ahead and write out a couple. This will take a minute, but I recommend, I recommend having these written down somewhere. And we want to know up to 15. So one times one, that's going to be one. Two times two, four. Three times three, nine. Four times four, 16. Five times five, 25. 36, 49, 64. 81, 100, 121, 144, 169, 196, and 225. So if you want to go ahead and write these down, you can do that. Um, we'll try to get notebooks for everybody that wants one when I'm back in person. But for now, you can try to make do if you want to keep a loose sheet of paper or if you do have a notebook already. So again, this is helpful because when we're dealing with the difference of two squares method, it helps to be familiar with the different perfect squares. So like if we came across this number 81 here, we'd come across to our list of perfect squares, which are the orange ones and say, okay, here's 81. 81 is nine times nine. So when we go to find out, when we go to put in the number here, we put in the nine. Nine squared is the same as just saying nine times nine. So we're just replacing 81 with nine times nine which is nine squared. So we'll just go ahead and pause here for another moment. If anyone's getting this down and then we'll move on. And these you can also get um, by Googling perfect squares uh, as well. All right, so we'll leave this up on the right-hand side for while we begin this next part, which is solving quadratic equations like we started to do yesterday using the um, uh, factoring out of GCF method. So that this would be like if we had two X squared plus uh, let's say six X equals zero. So we still have a quadratic, we still have this x squared term. And we're gonna say, what's the biggest factor that we can take out from both of these terms, the two x squared and the six x, everything on the left side. So like before, if you remember, we start with the numbers. Two, you can get by doing one times two and that's it. Six, you can get by doing one times six or two times three. And then we're saying, what's the biggest number that goes into both of these? That's gonna be two. So we can take out a two. And let's think about it. Two X squared, that's one times two times X times X. X squared, that's just saying you have two X's be multiplied. And then over here, this is two times three times X. So what do they have in common? They have a two, like we just said, they also have an X in common. 
So we're not just taking out a two, we're taking out a two X. And we still have our equals zero. And then if you remember, we're saying two X times what is gonna give us two X squared. Focus on the number first, two times what number is gonna give you two? That's just a one. And then we have an X already, but we need X squared. So we need another X. One X times two X is two X squared. And if you remember, you can also just look up here if you write it out like this, which you don't have to. But when we took out the two and the X, we were left with one X, which is what we have. Then just drop down whatever signs there. In this case, it's plus. And then we can do the trick where we look up here for this one, that's a three left over. Two X times three gives us six X. So what we've done so far is we factor this um, quadratic, but we wanna finish up solving it. So what value of X is gonna make this true? So to make this a little bit more similar to the ones we were looking at already, we can just maybe put this other factor in parentheses. Now it's just like before, we're asking the same question. What value of X is gonna make this parentheses equal zero? What value of X is gonna make this one equal to zero? But now they look a little bit different, look a little bit more complicated. So let's go back to an example we had before, where we have, let's say we had X plus five times X minus five equals zero. Like we said before, I think we did this one earlier. If we had this one, we'd have X equals five, x equals negative five. How did we get those? Because we're gonna use the exact same method to find the values of x here. So how do we get five and negative five? We're asking what value of x is gonna make those equal to zero. So one way to find that is by setting it equal to zero. We wanna know what value of x will make this expression equal to zero. So you can say, okay, if x minus five equals zero, what is X gonna be? So we would solve for X plus five plus five, X equals five, which is what we got over here. Say X plus five equals zero and solve for X. So that's how we really get X equals five, X equals negative five. We're basically setting, setting it equal to zero and solving it. Just those ones are a little bit easier to juggle in our head. So we're going to take that exact approach down here, approach. We're going to say 1x plus 3 equals 0. When you're solving for x, remember to start with addition and subtraction, then move on to division multiplication. So here we're going to start by getting rid of this positive 3 by doing the opposite. Remember, you always want to do the opposite to get rid of it. Those cancel out, leaving us with 1x equals negative 3. Zero minus three is just negative three. And then actually we already solved for this because one X is just the same as X. So we get X equals negative three. Oh, so that one was actually not really more difficult than the other ones. But over here, the two X, what value of X is gonna make this one equal to zero? You can start thinking about it before we even set up the equation. Two times something equals zero. What is that number gonna be? Whenever you have one that's like that, some number times X, it's always gonna be zero. Let's see if that's true. So set it equal to zero and we're gonna solve. This is two times X. So to get rid of that two, we do the opposite of times, which is divide. Twos cancel out, leaving us with X equals zero over two, which is just zero. So we did get zero, X equals zero and x equals negative three. Let's look at another one. Let's say we have, let's try to make it more complicated this time, let's think. Let's say um, 15 x squared plus, I think this is one, 10 x equals zero. So we're gonna solve for this. We're gonna take out a GCF, 15, or for one, let's just try to do this one without going through the steps. And then we'll return to doing the steps. But let's just try this one. So 15 and 10, what's the biggest number that can go into both of those? That's gonna be a five. So we can take out a five. 
Also, we know that this one has two X's, this one has one X. How many do they have in common? Just one X in common. So we can take out an X also. Then five X times what will give us 15 X squared. So focus on the number first, five times what number is gonna give us 15? That's three. And then we just have an X, but we need an X squared. So we need another X, five X times three X, that's 15 X squared. Now over here, five X times what is gonna give us 10 X? That's gonna be two. Five times two is 10 and we have our X. And then we'll just drop down the plus sign. And then like we did before, we can just put this one in parentheses to make it a little more familiar. It doesn't change anything. Let's start over here. This is what we said where you have something times X. It's always gonna be zero. Let's just double check using the new method. Five times X, we get rid of the five by doing division. It's being multiplied. We'll get X equals zero over five, which is zero. And then over here, this one will be a little trickier. So three X, plus two equals zero. When we're solving for X, start with any addition and subtraction. We have plus two. To get rid of it, we'll do the opposite, which is minus two. Positive two minus two is zero, so they cancel. Zero minus two is negative two. And then we have three times X. So how do we get rid of the three? By doing the opposite of times, which is divide. So divide both sides. Threes cancel, leaving us with X equals negative two over three. That's fine that it's a fraction. We'll just leave it like that. So X equals zero, X equals negative two thirds. Let's move on to the practice problem. And we'll try to squeeze it in actually. So you have this one. This is number two. So I'll go ahead and try to solve this one by factoring out a GCF. Let's say we have, um, let's say nine X squared minus six X equals zero. So let's pause the video and give this one a try. Okay, let's have a look. So first we wanna factor out the GCF. So we focus on the numbers. Nine you can get by doing one times nine or three times three. Six you can get by doing one times six or two times three. The biggest number they have in common is three. So we can take out a three. And then also they both have an X. This one has two X's, this one just has one. So they have at least one X in common or exactly one X in common we'd say. And then what are we left with? Three X times what gives us nine X squared? Focus on the numbers first. Three times what number is gonna give us nine? That's a three. And we already have one X. Three X times three would be nine X, but we need nine X squared. That means we need to multiply it with another X to become nine X squared. Then we'll drop down the sign. And this one was a, was that a, I think that was minus. And now we're asking three X times what is gonna give us six X. That's just gonna be two. Three times two is six. And then we just have the one X. So now we're ready to solve by inspection. Again, we can put this one in parentheses just to make it a little bit more familiar. And we know that this one is gonna be zero because three times something equals zero. That means X has to be zero. Three times zero equals zero. This one will go ahead and set equal to zero and solve. We said start with any addition and subtraction. We have subtraction here, minus two. We're gonna do the opposite of it to get rid of it because we want X by itself. And you always have to do it on both sides of the equal sign. So plus two over here also. And we have three X equals zero plus two is two. And we have three times X. We need to get rid of that three. It's being multiplied. So the opposite is to divide. That's gonna cancel it out, leaving us with X equals two thirds. 
So x equals zero and x equals two thirds. And let's go ahead and try one more practice. Let's say we have, um, let's say, 8x squared plus 10x equals 0. So let's go ahead and pause the video and give this a try. All right. So eight you get by doing one times eight or two times four. 10 is one times 10 or two times five. The biggest thing they have in common is just a two, but then they also have an X. This one has two X's, this one has one. So we can take out a one, I mean a, an X. And then what are we gonna be left with? Two X times what is gonna give us eight X squared. Focus on the number first, two times what number gives you eight? That's gonna be a four. And then you may kind of get the hang of it at this point, we need an X also. Because two times four is eight, and then X times X gives us the X squared. And then we'll drop down the sign, which is a plus. And then we're saying two X times what would give us 10 X. That's gonna be five. Two times five is 10, and we have our X already. And from here, we're ready to go ahead and inspect. For this one, it's gonna be x equals zero, because two times zero is zero. And then over here, let's set this one up. Four x plus five equals zero. Again, when you're solving for x, start with addition and subtraction. We have a plus five, that's addition. We need to get rid of it, which means we need to do the opposite, <clears throat> which is subtraction. Those cancel, leaving us with four x equals, zero minus five is just negative five. And then, we have four X equals negative five. I'm just rewriting it so we have more space because the last thing we need to do is get rid of that four. It's being multiplied right now. Four X is the same thing as four times X. So to get rid of that four being multiplied, we need to divide. So we're gonna divide both sides by four. The fours cancel, leaving us with X equals negative five over four. So X equals zero, X equals negative five over four. At this point, let's go ahead and move on to part A 